Today we're looking at 1st and 2nd Peter. This is book number 60 and 61. I actually had the numbers wrong. Nobody, nobody noticed, but I had the numbers wrong <laughs> last, last week. So I corrected them this week. We're up to book 60 and 61. Who remembers how many books are in the Bible? 66. Very good. Sarah's paying attention. Oh, so we're very close to the end because we're end of November, aren't we? So December, we're going to be finished. Atticus, pay attention here. Sit forward. Okay, good boy. First and second Peter. Now, like the book of James, remember the letter of James was written by James. Who do you think these letters were written by? Peter. Peter. That's good. How did you guess? <laughs> it's here. First and second. So Peter, how many how many letters did he write? How many, how many do you think? How many do you think? Two. Two. That's it. Because he got first. It's the first letter from Peter. Second letter from Peter. And what we want to focus on today is many themes in Peter's letters, but the one we want to focus on today is growing in grace. What does that mean? That means we're growing in our faith. We're growing as a Christian. We're learning how to be better Christians as we live in this evil world. This, this world has a lot of sin in it, and we need to grow in how we deal in this world, how we live in this world. What is this? What is this? It's a man in jail, isn't it? So why? This is, uh, I'm sharing with you some verses from First and Second Peter's first Peter and 2 Peter. This is 1 Peter 2.20. Look at what it says here. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted, what does that mean? Buffet is when you're, uh, something. Buff, buffet means somebody's hitting you. Buffeted. Hello. What, is, what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently, but if when ye do well, and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. So what is this verse saying? He's saying, hey, if you do wrong and you get in trouble and then you take that correction well, well, that's a, that's a good thing. But you know what's even more pleasing to God is when you do the right thing and you suffer for it. Do you know sometimes when you do the right thing, you'll suffer for it? Why? Because the world doesn't always like us doing the right thing. So sometimes the world will persecute you for doing the right thing. See, when you do the wrong thing, like a prisoner that goes to jail, and he, if he, if he uh, takes that well in terms of, you know, he accepts his punishment, well, people would expect that, wouldn't they? Because he did wrong. But if you do right, if you do the right thing and you get in trouble, God says, hey, that's, that's pleasing to God because you tried to do what's right even when people were trying to stop you from doing what's right. Let's look at another passage. What do you think this is? People put their hands up. What do you think it is, Atticus? Do you know what it is? Yeah, you do? What are they doing when they put their hands up? What do you think? Waiting for a bus stop. Waiting for a bus stop? Yeah, that's true. When people put their hands, usually they put their hands out and up when they're like trying to hail the bus. Now this one is people asking questions. This is what I got this picture for, people asking questions. And what does 1 Peter 3, 15 say? But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. What does that mean? God in your hearts, you should keep him holy in your hearts, shouldn't you? You shouldn't think of God badly in your hearts. Because how you treat God starts here, doesn't it? Starts in your heart. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you a bit later, Mateo. Let me go through this one first. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Look at this. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So what is this verse talking about? This verse is saying, hey, sometimes people have questions about your faith and you need to be ready to answer them. What does that mean? If you need to be ready to answer the questions, you need to know the answers, don't you? All right, so this is one way you can grow in grace is you need to learn the answers because people might ask you questions about Jesus, people might ask you questions about salvation. You want to know how to respond to them. Okay? What's this? Look at this picture of somebody's mind working. You know, some people think the mind is like a lot of different cogs, how your mind ticks and how it works. Second Peter 1.15. We're in the second letter now. Look at this verse. Moreover, I will endeavour that ye may be able, after my decease, 
to have these things always in remembrance. What is Peter saying? Some of the things he's writing in his letters, he wants to make sure after his decease, who knows what decease means? Decease means when you die. So Paul is saying, hey, I want to make sure I'm going to endeavor that after my decease, after I die, to have these things, which things? The things written in his letter. He's saying, I want to make sure you always have these things in your remembrance, in your mind. See, so that's another way we can grow in grace is when we are reminded again and again about the truths of God's word and we remember them. And that's how we can grow in grace too. Now, how do we learn from God's word? How do we learn these things? Sarah. That's it, from reading the Bible. That's why I've got this picture. 2 Peter 1, 21. Look. For the prophecy, what's prophecy? The teachings of God's Word. It's God's Word. You know, sometimes it's printed in a book, sometimes it's in a computer these days. They didn't have computers back then. We have them now, so you can get it in a book, or you can get it on a phone or a computer. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. What is it saying? This book didn't come because some man thought it up. This came. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Who's the Holy Ghost? That's God, isn't it? Oh, you guys knew that one. Oh, I should have asked if you guys knew. The Holy Ghost is God. So what happened? Holy men of God spake. You know, when you speak, sometimes your own opinion, that's your will. You are speaking your words. But you know where the Bible came from? This wasn't their own will. It wasn't by the will of man. But God actually spoke through them. You see how it says that? Holy men of God spake as they were moved. By who? The Holy Ghost. So yeah, you can imagine. Imagine if you were speaking and it wasn't actually your words. It was actually the word of God coming through you. That's what happened. That's how we got the Bible. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So this is what we need to read in order to grow in grace and that's what the theme of this lesson is today we need to grow in grace just like this plant is growing up the more you read god's word you know how to answer you suffer for the things you do in god's word you grow in grace and this is where he ends his epistles look second peter three eighteen. but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So you see how we want to grow in our graciousness, in our love, and in what we know about the Lord Jesus Christ. To him, who's the him here? To him who? To Jesus, that's right, Jesus. Be glory both now and forever. Amen. All right, let's read this one together. You ready? Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18 but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him be glory both now and forever amen okay so like peter's saying hey we need to make sure we think about the word of god we remember the Word of God. We try and do the Word of God. Sometimes we'll suffer for the Word of God. And God is pleased with that. When we do the right thing and we suffer, and, and we want to make sure we're always growing in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. 